afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 39th installment Sarmiento from the National Telehealth Center, National Institutes of Health, University of the Philippines, Manila. Today, we have a very be vaccinated. Okay, I think Raymond's a little Crime? choppy. Friends, uh, Raymond, you're a bit choppy. Anyway, good morning, everyone. Raymond, ulitin natin. Medyo choppy ka. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Oh, sorry, I was going to introduce my partner in crime, Dr. Susie. She's the special envoy for Global Health Initiatives. Sorry. Go, go ahead, Dr. Susie. Hello, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Maayong adlaw, maayong udto sa tanan, na imbag nga bigat, and I'm trying to memorize. Uh, buenos dias, todos. So, good morning, good day, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to our um, webinar on Stop COVID Deaths. Maraming salamat sa lahat na nandito. From all over the country again, uh, Raymond, Batangas, Iligan, Il Ilo, Davao, Quezon City, Cabanatuan, Cebu, Ilocos, Lipa, Dumaguete, and Mevaisien. I'm sure you're seeing more. And so we just like to thank you for joining us today. We've got a very exciting um, lineup of speakers. Pag-usapan po natin sino dapat hindi mabakunahan, who should not be vaccinated. And you're going to hear it from the experts of the Philippine General Hospital and the University of the Philippines. I've got an announcement, uh, Raymond, before we continue. And I'd just like to greet also all of those who are watching us on um, the playback on Facebook and on uh, YouTube. But we have an announcement. Um, Pag-aalay web, web exhibition festival. Let's put that on. Okay, so this is a celebration of the Filipino spirit in time of COVID through the eyes of our filmmakers, communicators, and multimedia artists. Watch the free festival streaming of the video entries on the TVU Facebook. Parodi po yan. The TVU YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the like. So you can cast the vote for the Troops to Go People's Choice Award. Catch the Global Live Streaming Virtual Award Ceremony on Feb 28. That's Sunday at 6 p.m. Manila time. Okay, back to you, Thank you, Dr. Susie. I just wanted to recognize that we have over 7,400 registrants just for this webinar alone. And we have a little over 2,700 plus attend. YouTube channel ng TVUP. Mapapanood rin po sa live streaming ng Facebook pages po ng Stop COVID Deaths at ng University of the Philippines system. Uh, I'd just like to take, get, uh, take this opportunity po to thank all the members of the very hardworking team behind the Stop COVID Deaths webinar series. Sa UP system po, National Telehealth Center, UP Manila, NIH, also for our technical support provided by UPITDC. At nasabi ko na po, yung mga nanonood sa YouTube, hindi po ito magagampanan without the very hardworking team and the help and support from TVUP. And also, obviously, we have our experts from the Philippine General Hospital and from the UP College of Medicine. Uh, I'd like to go on po to the next slide which shows our e-certificates, yung pong mga patuloy na nagtatanong Nagde-direct message po sa Facebook uh, page, sa Messenger, sa email po. Ito po ang itsura. This will be how the certificates of attend. Okay, I think we lost Raymond for a moment there. But this is what the certificate looks like. And uh, we will be giving you uh, this certificate if you participate for more than 50% of the time of the webinar. So, uh, yung po itsura ng ating certification, and I think you've got Raymond back. Raymond, are you back? Okay, I think Raymond's connection is, is kind of unstable. So, we're going to move. Uh, we're going to move ahead. We'd just like to welcome everyone again. Yeah. And um, oh, there, Raymond, go ahead. Okay, mukhang nawawala si, mukhang nawawala si Raymond. All right, so let's let's proceed. 
Um, we've got a very interesting topic because we know that we already have uh, one vaccine that is going to be deployed in the next few months. And I think as time progresses, habang humahaba po ang panahon, dadami po ang mga bakuna na mabibigyan po ng permiso ng ating mga otoridad na gamitin. At uh, mukhang marami namang magpapabakuna. Pero siguro gusto nating linawin, especially for our health workers, we, we want to make sure that we all know who should not be vaccinated. And that is the question we're going to um, answer, answer today. So let me um, introduce our um, speaker for our opening remarks, uh, none other than the Chancellor of UP Manila, Dr. Carmen Sita Padilla. Menchit, welcome to your webinar. <laughs> Please give your opening remarks. Go ahead. Good afternoon. You know, good afternoon to you, Dr. Susie and Raymond, as well as to the viewers from all over the country and outside of the Philippines. Okay, Dr. Susie? Go ahead. So, but okay. not, yeah, go ahead with your with your with your opening message for everyone, Chancy. Okay. So, so the special topic series on COVID-19 vaccine issues, and today being the fourth this year, is UP's commitment to education of the health workers and the general public. Just for the uh, information of our viewers, the University of the Philippines has eight constituent universities, UP Baguio, UP Diliman, UP Manila, UP Los Baños, UP Visayas, UP Cebu, um, UP Mindanao, and UP Open University. And um, in this webinar series, we've been hearing the College of Medicine, Philippine General Hospital, National Institutes of Health, and the Philippine Genome Center. And these are all units of the, of the University of the Philippines. And these are the units taking major roles in the COVID pandemic. They work very closely with DOH, DOST, the ILG, IAPF, and other government agencies. So the academe actually acts as a partner of government in identifying the answers to some of the questions. So to our faculty, alumni, frontliners, researchers, allow me to, my, to give my personal thanks for your year-long contribution to the COVID pandemic crisis. Now for the past year, we had mixed feelings of uh, we had mixed feelings not fully understanding COVID-19. For several months, what prevailed were feelings of fear and despair. And fortunately now, we are experiencing feelings of relief with encouraging news that globally, the, the reported cases of COVID-19 has declined over the past few weeks. And now we have the promise of better treatment and the vaccine. As we continue to appreciate the value of public health measures, we view the COVID-19 vaccine as a concrete measure to support normalcy and return to business. Now, in the past episodes, we had experts helping us better understand the vaccine, the flow process, the government commitment, the role of the private sector, and the role of the ordinary person. And these episodes were planned to increase a person's trust on the national vaccination plan, and most importantly, the COVID vaccine. But with contradicting statements heard over radio and the television, complicated further with social media messages, there is still confusion in the air. And now that the COVID vaccine is here, we ask, should I receive the vaccine? Should I not receive the vaccine? And our speakers and reactors today will help you help me, help all of us make that decision. Back to you, Susie. Okay, thank you very much. That was Chancellor Manchit Padilla of the University of the Philippines, Manila. Thank you so much. And uh, Chancellor Manchit, please join us at the panel discussion later. I think we're going to have a very, very uh, exciting discussion. Um, Raymond's going to move from one room to another or something like that. Raymond, are you there? All right, yes, I am. I'll, I'll try to transfer, yes. Okay, but actually we can, I, I can actually hear you now. Okay, so Raymond, you want to launch our poll? Okay, so thank you. May we, may we have the poll? This is really just a fun quiz, an audience survey coupled with an opinion poll. Very, very sure lang po ito. You, are see, you should be seeing it on your screens po. And please, uh, I enjoin the more than 3,000 attendees here to key in their answers. The first question po reads, what place are you viewing the webinar from? 
So, ito po ay hindi na po as granular uh, in our previous um, webinar po. No? So, as more and more people are keying in, we are seeing a lot of them are in Metro Manila. But uh, we believe that there are, uh, based on the registration, we have international attendees. So, please key in your answers po. Don't, please don't be shy. Ayun, may lumabas na from Australia and Pacific Rim. Number two will be, what is your line of work? So most of uh, our attendees are from the medical field and from the nursing fields po. Uh, maraming salamat uh, for uh, keying in your answers. Uh, and we want to be able to see uh, your answers on the third one, which states, who should not be vaccinated? Sino po ang hindi dapat mabakunahan for COVID-19? So marami po dito. Uh, medyo neck and neck po ang kasagutan. Senior citizens na may sakit at mga batang below 16 years old. So please key in. Continue to key in your answers po. And not un unlike our previous webinar, mag-iisa na lang po ang nakikita nyo pong poll questions na nasa harap po ninyo. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to give... Uh, a shout out po for those who are joining us. We have uh, people all the way internationally. Po, no? We have people all the way from the UAE, from Doha, Qatar, from Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, from Egypt, Bahrain, Ghana, uh, Perth, Australia, and Melbourne, New Zealand, from American Samoa, England, Germany, Sweden, the United States, obviously, and from Canada. So really, we have a whole slew of attendees from all over the world. And we hope that this webinar is as informative or more so than our previous webinar. Back to you, Dr. Susie. Okay, thank you very much, Raymond. And um, again, for those who, are, uh, who just joined us right now, welcome uh, to, re welcome to the webinar. Um, you know, we've got a Q&A box there where you can put in your questions and we will try to answer them. And I hope that our speakers will also answer them in the course of their presentation. So we wanted to have, uh, you know, we like to do some new things on the webinar. So we have from TVUP some interviews of older persons or seniors on the topic uh, of vaccination. So take it away, TVUP. understand ko ng COVID vaccine, mayroong vaccine na very effective daw. Mayroon din naman na rin ko sa radyo na hindi pa na-tested ang kanyang ano, length o kanyang effectiveness. Sa natin ko, sa, ayon sa mga balibalita, may mga bakuna na ang gobyerno ay inaay para sa, amin na, para sa atin na gamitin natin. Sa understanding ko, ang expectation ko kasi ngayon 2021, Itong pandemic, maglalaylo na. Ang, ang nangyari, balitan. Meron pang UK variant before January. Di ba? Parang sa nakikita ko eh, mukhang tatagal pa to. Kasi hindi tayo nagkakaisa tungkol sa pananaw natin sa, ano, sa mga bakuna, kung paano malulunasan. Hindi naman sa napaka-negative. Kumbaga, parang huwag ka muna mag-expect na ano, para bang we are expecting for the worst pa na baka yung nga economy natin, pababa ng pababa. Sa tingin ko, controllable naman. Pero when, hindi ko alam kailan. Pinag-aaralan ko muna kung anong mga nangyayari sa paligid. Nakikibalita sa mga kaibigan sa ibang bansa sa mga nang, naging resulta sa kanila after na mabakunahan. Hindi na ako magpavaccinate. Nakita ko na short term lang lang yung buhay ko dahil matanda na ako. Uh, it might be better kung yung pambakit ako na maibigay sa younger than me. Mapakinabangan pa. Parang naniniwala din ako sa mga sinasabi nila. Kaya lang, meron pa rin akong doubt. May doubt pa rin ako. Depende muna. Hindi ko muna sinasabi 100% yes. Depende sa sitwasyon. Of course, I will. Because uh, it will, well, I, I believe in it. I've always been 
vaccinated since I was a child and my children, I also did that to my children and my children to their children. So all of us, three generations, we had the vaccines. And I believe in vaccines, especially if the um, Philippine scientists here approve them. Gusto ko na sana na fair yung pagdistribute regardless of political color. Basta pupunta, magpa-insection. Walang pinipiling race or anuman. Thank you very much, TVUP, for for those interviews. And nagpapasalamat din tayo sa mga pumayag mag-interview. And we can really see that the public is uh, quite discerning, very well informed. And I think as we progress, habang patuloy po tayong natututo at nag-aaral tungkol sa COVID-19, napaka-importante po na lahat tayong mga nagtatrabaho sa larang ng kalusugan ay uh, alam, maraming kaalaman na maaaring natin mag- maibigay sa mga tao. Lalo na yung mga unang mabakunahan ng ating mga senior citizens and health workers. Sa araw po na to, nakafocus po tayo in general dun sa uh, sino ba yung dapat hindi mabakunahan? Who should we not Vaccinate. Can you be vaccinated if you've had COVID-19 before? Can you be vaccinated if you're pregnant? Can you be vaccinated if you're being treated for cancer or going through dialysis? Can you be vaccinated if you have hypertension and diabetes? These are some of the questions that we are asking and we are going to get our panelists to answer them. We're going to focus on the seniors today and um, the general population later on. In our next webinar, we're going to talk about the health workers. But today, we're gonna get we're going to get an overview. So, our first speaker, um, associate professor of UP College of Medicine and head of hospital infection control at the Philippine General Hospital. Uh, my pleasure to introduce and to welcome to the webinar again, uh, Dr. Reina Burba. Nina, Nina, welcome to the webinar. Hello, everybody. Wait, let me get my screen up. Okay. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone, again. So, uh, I'll zoom in right into the topic of who should not get vaccinated. Um, so, this are I declare no conflict of interest. I'm a member of the PSMED and uh, work at the PGH and at the Medical City. So I think yung pinaka question mo na natin and uh, basic premise is to answer our COVID are the COVID vaccines really necessary at this point in time? So dapat siguro very very clear na sa atin lahat that we really continue to be in the midst of a pandemic and the and the effects of this pandemic are beyond just the clinical impact. There's like devastating economic and all other effects of the pandemic. So, so far the health protocols seem to be helping us cope with it. But uh, one of the best ways we think that we could stop this COVID-19 virus is to build up enough SARS-CoV-2 specific immunity and that's through vaccination. So in Isa lang to sa mga slides ko, but kailangan rin, we need to trust, no? We need to trust the system that uh, our vaccines are safe. So there's, I heard kanina, the meron pa agam-agam about the safety of the vaccines. And that's understandable kasi these are very new vaccines and they've been developed very quickly over just over a few months. But um, let me reassure you that the current vaccines that have been approved have undergone phase three trials wherein the number of participants have been large enough that if there were major safety concerns, they should have been detected already. And that all of these trials have been really scrutinized by not only stringent bodies globally, but also by independent scientists. And there are ongoing monitoring of adverse events. So these are the AEs. So even as people are getting uh, injected in other countries, we continue to watch them. Kanina nga sabi ng isang interview, titignan ko muna kung anong nangyari sa iba. So that's very good. No? And I think yun nga, yung, yung tagline na trust, we need to trust that what the government will be providing us Filipinos 
uh, would be safe. So they've undergone careful testing and our country FDA uh, will issue an EUA uh, emergency use authorization only if these vaccines met the Philippine FDA criteria for safety and effectiveness. So yung mga tanong, so nilist ko po dito yung mga usually na receive ko ng mga tanong. Kasi syempre kung allergic ka, di ba, yun na yung isa sa mga sinasabi natin na huwag ka magpabakuna kung may allergy ka. Pero ano bang allergy yung will make you not eligible for a future COVID vaccine? No? So according to the, uh, ah, sorry, uh, this is a very timely position statement from the Philippine Society of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology, and uh, working with other professional societies, and they could be accessed through this link. And they said that uh, the only current contraindication for COVID-19 vaccination is if you had an allergy to a previous dose of COVID-19 vaccine or any of its components. No? So that means kung dun sa first dose ay nagka-rash ka or unfortunately got a severe anaphylactic reaction, dapat hindi ka na talaga magpa-second dose. Okay. Or if you had allergy in the past, it's significant from its components. No? So um, there's the PEG or polyethylene glycol seen in colonoscopy preparations or the laxatives or itong polysorbate which are present in vascular graft materials. So if you've had any history related to this, then perhaps kayo yung magsha-shy away. Wag na natin itangka na magpabakuna. Okay, what about yung iba? Na, hindi naman ako ever, syempre hindi naman tayo nabakunahan before, pero we had immediate allergic reaction like orticaria, angioedema, difficulty in breathing from other vaccines. So let's say you had the flu shot before and had allergy to it, then maybe that's one that needs <clears throat> that needs um, further evaluation. And it's um, important that perhaps you should seek uh, allergy alert uh, consultation with an immunologist or an allergist. And it's important that all the facilities who will be doing this vaccination should have a part of it. So part yun ng DOH protocol na may observation post 30 minutes. Ngayon nga naririnig ko nag in extend na nila to 60 minutes, especially for people who would need additional period for observation. What about the others? Yung mga nagka-allergy sa seafood or merong other allergens in the environment. So the allergy group also said that patients with allergic reactions to food, inhalant, other environmental allergens, insects, latex, other oral medications that are not related to the vaccine or its components should be able to safely receive the COVID-19 vaccines. People with immunodeficiency and other autoimmune diseases should also be able to get the vaccine. But for this, kasi kulang pa yung ating mga data, maybe it's good to again run it by your physician and discuss it with them. People with well-controlled asthma, no? kasi ito yung tinatakot natin, mabakunahan tapos biglang uh, hihingalin dahil sa asthmatic attack. So as well as, as long as you have a well-controlled asthma and stable on your inhaled corticosteroids, then you should be able to safely receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, what about yung issue on antibody dependent enhancement or we call them ADE? So again, many Filipinos remember nga the, our unfortunate um, experience with the Dengvaksha where there's this question about ADE. So ang um, final conclusions related to this are the COVID-19 vaccines are not expected and have not been seen to be producing an ADE response. So sa maraming nakasulat dito, ang answer ay no. They're not supposed to cause ADE. What about side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine? So hindi naman sinasabi na walang side effects. And in fact, it's good for you to be 
to be aware that this will happen. And that's what we call reactogenicity. No? So it's part of the immune response. Habang nag-create ng immune response yung body nyo, you do get side effects. Side effects occur during the first week after vaccination. And most of the time, it's one to two days after you receive the dose. And most of the time, it's more frequent after the second dose and has been seen to be more frequent in younger than older recipients of the vaccine. So in so U.S., we've been seeing uh, uh, they're reporting um, uh, AEs. And most of the time, it's like this. No? So expect kung magbabakunahan kayo ng kaka-headache, fatigue, dizziness, nausea, even chills. And a lot of pain at the injection site. So these are not uncommon. Pero dito sa data, about 20%. So fairly common siya. Okay? And expect this, but they are supposed to go away after uh, usually 24 to 48 hours. So what happens? What can you do when this happens? So you can take paracetamol, non-steroidals, or cold compress. Cold compress. Uh, most of the allergic reactions can be managed with antihistamines. And of course, a facility should be ready with the uh, ability to respond to anaphylaxis. Uh, what does it mean kung walang side effects? Parang walang nangyari. So does it mean it didn't work? So on the contrary, many of the clinical trials, as we said, mga 20%. So there's this 80% who actually didn't get any side effects. But we know that there was efficacy. No? So more than 90 out of every 100 uh, based on clinical trial data have been seen to have efficacious results. What about you mga tao na kakabakunan from others? Let's say you just had your anti-pneumonia shots. How long do I need to wait before getting the COVID vaccine? So the USCDC recommends a span of about 14 days between receipt of a non-COVID vaccine and a COVID vaccine. So either way, no? So kung nagkabakuna ka tapos time na to get your pneumonia shot or flu shot in the future, then... Uh, Wait for 14 days. Um, this question, yung, does a vaccinated person present a risk to the rest of the household if they are unvaccinated? So I realized that many of the healthcare workers started to worry whether they're being vaccinated. Sila yung una, tas uuwi sila sa home nila wherein their senior uh, senior household members were not yet vaccinated. So ang sagot dito, I know. Uh, the COVID-19 vaccines are not composed of live viruses, so there's no infectious virus that we will pass on to the others in the home who have not been vaccinated yet. Okay. What about pregnant women? So pregnant women were, of course, not included in the early trials for COVID-19. Pero when they looked at the data, there were very some very few participants who eventually were found to be pregnant. So they had data on that. And on this small group of women, no major concerns on safety were identified. But of course, kailangan pa ng more additional data on this. So expert groups would recommend that pregnant women can be allowed to uh, have the vaccine. So again, the for the pregnant women and for you who have uh, colleagues who are pregnant, uh, talk to your obstetricians and discuss the pros and cons. So um, the expert groups would say that if the pregnant women also belong to other at-risk groups like healthcare workers sila or they're in a community or vicinity na very high in risk for community transmissions and then maybe hindi na sila makahintay, kailangan sila mabukunahan, then they may go ahead and do that. And all pregnant women should continue to follow health protocols whether vaccinated or not vaccinated. What about yung other immunocompromised patients? So um, again, expert groups would say that as long as uh, they do not belong to any of the following categories, the patients with severe allergy or history to allergy to any of the vaccines, uh, any of the vaccine components we discussed earlier, then patients with immune 
immunocompromised states. Again, it's good for you to discuss it with your physicians about the pros and cons. But in general, kayo nga yung gusto natin ma-protect from uh, the severe impact of COVID-19. What about people who have active COVID-19? No? So dumating na sa ospital natin yung bakuna, eh pero may COVID-19 ako. So people who currently have COVID-19 should wait until they have fully recovered. No? And some patients actually uh, were part of some clinical trial on monoclonal antibodies or receive uh, convalescent plasma titers. So they should wait for three months before getting the vaccine. So that's the recommendation. And what if I did get the COVID-19 in the past? So we've been in this pandemic for almost a year now. So many people would, di ba sa Pilipinas, mga uh, over a, a half a million already had uh, COVID-19. So the recommendation is people who already had COVID-19 and tested positive may still benefit from getting COVID-19. So... Uh, we don't know how long natural immunity would last, and it's um, recommended that these patients who, these persons who had COVID-19 in the past still get their vaccinations. So this is my summary slide, medyo maliliit na, but it uh, summarizes uh, who should not get vaccinated or should seek further evaluation before getting the vaccines. That's it na. Sissy, thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much, Nina. And you know, our audience wants to see you. So I'm going to ask you to turn on your camera for a moment. And, oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Yung ha, no? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yan po si Dr. Nina Pascua Verba. And Nina, before we go to the next speaker, I just wanted to ask you. So most of our classmates, colleagues in other countries have already are now on, the second, on their second vaccination. No? What is the feedback you're getting from them? Um, they said that most of them did get uh, yung nagkaroon ng reactogenicity. So they were initially anxious, but they were also reassured that the, there's some immune response that happened because they did get uh, transiently some side effects. But they were very transient, very minor, didn't need any additional extra medicines to comfort them. So, yeah. Right. And mostly on the sec was it mostly on the second shot or yeah mostly on the second shot yes yeah so we're hearing we're hearing the same <laughs> the same thing so um, Nina before you go no uh, we are uh, we're we're going to have um, some other some other speakers but I can see ninety nine questions in the Q and A box so I'm going to ask you <laughs> to try to give some quick answers. Um, you know, there are questions about why is the epinephrine given on the on the thigh and why not uh, on the arm, mga ganyan, no? So if you can go ahead and answer those because we have more than 100 questions on Q&A. So we're going to turn over now. Nina, we're, we're, going, to go. we're going to call you for the, ano, ha? for the panel discussion. Okay, Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Nina, for that interesting uh, perspective and talk. Uh, thank you, Dr. Susie. Uh, right now, I'd like to move on to our second main speaker. So today, po, dalawa po ang ating main speakers and we'll have two other reactors. Po. Uh, we, I, I'm very happy and honored po to introduce one of the leading really uh, experts in geriatric medicine and the director of the Institute of Aging at the National Institutes of Health, Director Shelly De La Vega. Ma'am Shelly, welcome po. Hello and thank you, Director Raymond and my uh, friend and classmate, uh, Dr. Susie, and of course, the organizers of TVUP. So uh, I have no conflict of interest, and I am not in any way related to anyone working in a drug company that uh, makes vaccines, or I'm not even employed, or neither am I a speaker for a, a vaccine company. So uh, thank, thank you, you for that clear disclosure uh, to, to start your presentation, Director Shelley. Uh, without further ado, uh, uh, may we ask you to share your screen, Pa? Uh, I think you will share my screen. Okay, uh, okay. Right. TVUP, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, should older people be vaccinated? So, I really am posing another side of that question. So, we'll have our fir my first slide, please. 
So are old people at risk of severe COVID? And the answer there is yes. No? We have data from two, uh, two sites. Ourworldindata.org did a scoping of uh, the entire world at the start of the, uh, the pandemic last year. And if you can see here, uh, between the ages of 50 to 59, the deaths are between 0.4 to 1.3%. If you move up to 60 to 69 years, that increases to 1.8 to 3 percent. By the time a patient is between 70 to 79 years, that risk is already uh, quadruple, 4.8 to 12.8 percent. And those 80 years and above had as much as 20.2 percent deaths. No? And this is from China, from parts of Europe. Remember, when that happened, especially in Europe, most of these deaths among older people occurred in nursing homes. And we are going to talk about nursing home uh, patients later on. How about in the Philippines? Dr. John Wong of Epimetrics just shared uh, this data from our uh, DOH data. From 25 to 49 years old, the death per 10,000 population in the Philippines is only 4.32. But if you can see, as soon as the age is between 50 to 64, that is already 25.87 deaths per 10,000. So that's practically five times. But look, at the age of 65 and older, that is already 81.15 deaths per 10,000. So there is really a very big leap in terms of mortality as people age. Next slide, please. So why? are older people at risk of severe COVID? What's the, is it really just the age? We tried to answer that question and uh, looking at the data from um, multiple sites, we realized that aside from age, no, there are morbidities or chronic diseases that predisposes an older person to mortality, hospitalization, and other complications. We did a study called Fit for Frail. This was funded by DOH. And we looked at uh, more than 400 Filipinos in communities in NCR, in Region 4A, in Region 7, and in Davao Region. And uh, we did a comprehensive geriatric assessment by trained uh, physicians and geriatricians. And of the 355 that completed their geriatrician assessment, we found out that 55.6% had hypertension, 16.8% had diabetes, 15.4% were obese, 11.6% were still actively smoking, most of whom were men. And there were social risks as well. Those living alone, 4.2% were living alone and were at risk of social isolation. And there was also a risk of dependency. They could no longer take care of themselves and 15.6% 15 of them had to have a primary caregiver to help them in their daily activities. Now, 44.2% uh, of those aged 80 and older needed help, you know, had some form of dependency. And this uh, dependency will contribute to what we will discuss later on as frailty. You know? So hypertension, diabetes, chronic smoking leading to uh, what we know as COPD, uh, cancers, chronic kidney disease. These are chronic degenerative diseases that contribute to increased mortality and morbidity among older persons. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so what am I saying now? I now know, I, I am now saying that older people with one or more of these chronic degenerative diseases are the best candidates for COVID vaccination. So yes, senior citizens, you should be vaccinated, especially if you have one or more of these chronic diseases. Next. So are COVID vaccines safe for older people? I will no longer discuss the details of the trials of the various COVID vaccines that are out there and that are being considered for distribution to older Filipinos. But let's assume that the vaccine has been proven to be effective in older people. Remember that there are many layers of approval of this vaccine. We have vaccine experts looking at the details of how the vaccine was made. 
how the trial was uh, conducted, who were enrolled in this trial, what were the side effects, what was the efficacy, and what is the effectiveness. So before that even reaches the approval of DOH, it has to go through uh, the HTAC, no? Health Technology Assessment Council, um, and they are looking at the evidence, the scientific evidence, before they even say, yes, this is a good vaccine for older people. So let's just assume that whatever DOH says should be given to older people is safe. What you'd also need to know is that aside from the vaccine approval, we also have various safety measures in store. Vaccine storage and handling, for example, is already being, uh, uh, we have hospitals and personnel that are being trained in how to handle and store vaccines. So that's ongoing right now. The various hospitals, LGU in the LGU also, and in DOH, and even private hospitals are being uh, monitored and ranked as to whether they are ready to roll out these vaccines in their centers. Next, site preparedness. Again, personnel, no? the way the site is laid out, uh, the way the chairs are laid out so that we still maintain physical distancing. Uh, these are all being prepared by the DOH at the moment, and of course, our, the, the LGU partners. When you get to the vaccination site, you will be screened. Your temperature will be taken. Uh, you will be asked about your uh, medical history, a little bit of that. Uh, and then, of course, you will be asked to, to sign a consent, and you know, they will explain to you the pros and cons of the vaccine. So even at that level, you should also be assured of what vaccine you are going to get. No? And then after you get vaccinated, you will be monitored on site for a minimum of 30 minutes to one hour. And after your vaccination, you will have to be monitored. Of course, there will be, a, hopefully, because we are already in that, uh, the phase of universal health care, hopefully you will have your own physician, a primary physician or your Former physician can also monitor you. And of course, you just have to be upfront and disclose whatever symptoms you are feeling. So really, there are various levels of safety that are in place. Next slide. Okay, now we've heard about that term frail, no? Frail. Maybe the senior citizens are too frail. Maybe I'm too weak, I'm too old. No, you, you probably have heard of those, uh, even senior citizens, and that is ageism, no, ageism. You are discriminating against your own self, yourself discriminating. Uh, I saw a uh, video earlier and that older person was trying to be, of course, very generous in saying that, oh, I'm too old, maybe someone else will benefit from it. No, but you know, that may be ageism. And then, of course, we need to understand what is frailty, because you will be hearing that word later on. Frailty is defined as reduced strength and physiological malfunctioning that predisposes an older person to increase dependency, vulnerability, and death. And in our Fit for Frail study, we looked at who were frail. And some of the criteria for frailty include multiple medical problems, three or more diseases, inability to walk, you know, a certain distance, inability to grip our hand grip uh, monitor uh, in a certain way. You know? And there are various uh, measures that we had our participants undergo in order to determine if they were frail or not. Now, uh, the frailest are, of course, at risk for COVID complications, hospitalizations, and death. Remember, and these frail individuals should be candidates for vaccination. Now, in our study, Fit for Frail, 15% of our 355 participants aged 60 and older were frail. So, hindi naman pala lahat ng senior citizen ay frail, 15% lang. But when we looked at those aged 80 and older, of course, there were more frail 80-year-olds and above. No? But then again, not all 80-year-olds are frail. Remember that. So, in that study, age 60 and older, in those four barangays, in those four regions, 19.3% per were actually robust. There were more people who were robust, na senior citizens, mal malakas pa ang katawan, matipuno. And 60.5% were pre-frail. 
60.5% were pre-frail. Ano yon? Yung at risk for being frail. And that 60.5% can be you. And your frailty, your pre-frailty state can improve with vaccination. Remember that. No? Okay. Next slide. Now, how about older people with dementia? Uh, we are now doing a, a uh, project on older people with dementia during this time of COVID because in our experience, there are people who with dementia, when they get hospitalized in, uh, and, and have COVID no? or are in COVID wards or in the ICU, they can present with uh, confusion, uh, agitation, which we call delirium. And even at home, no? those people with dementia who are quarantined or have to stay at home, they become very anxious. They can be depressed. They, their dementia can be uh, worsened by, by this isolation and maybe the fear of COVID. So we need to really support older persons with dementia during this time of COVID. In our Fit for Frail data, we determined that 24.4% had cognitive impairment, mild, mild cognitive impairment. This doesn't mean that they will eventually have dementia. This is uh, just uh, probably a sign that they may be at risk for dementia. But uh, of our participants didn't even know that they had dementia. Uh, it took uh, a screening test and evaluation by our geriatrician to be, to be able to be diagnosed to have dementia and 9.1% of our population of our cohort had dementia and uh, of which 3.2% had Alzheimer's dementia. So we need to uh, support persons with dementia in understanding and accepting the vaccine no? so that their fears are allayed. If they really cannot understand what the vaccine is, you need to have a legally authorized representative. Now this is usually a family member, spouse, or uh, children no, can, can sign that consent for them. But because sometimes they may not be able to understand what is happening to their body, there might be pain that they cannot express or they may lose their appetite and, and they wouldn't be able to tell you. You really just have to monitor them for pain, fever, poor food intake or any stomach symptoms and assist them. Tender loving care ang kailangan nila. And alam natin tayo mga Pilipino Magaling tayo dyan sa tender loving care. Okay? So we will talk about uh, a project of ours that we are going to be, we, we are in completion of. Uh, we will have a, sim, a series of webinars on dementia no? during this time of COVID. Next. So how about the frail and near the end of life? Yung talagang frail, you already have heard what frail means, but what about people who are so sick and almost at the end of their lives? But we know about hospice, people in hospice, people in nursing homes who are really uh, just waiting for their time to be called. No? Uh, and remember, there, there have been reports of deaths in Norway. No? In Norway, there were 23 deaths from the COVID, they say, immediately after they received the COVID vaccine. But was it really caused by the vaccine? Well, remember that most older persons in nursing homes in Norway, when they did this investigation, were known to be frail, had severe disease, and near the end of life. And that was uh, published in the British Medical Journal just one month ago. And they did not see any certainty in the association between the vaccine and these deaths. So they were saying, when they investigated 13 of these deaths, they were saying they had fever, nausea, and vomiting, and diarrhea. And they may, may have had dehydration because of that, no? And not directly from the vaccine, but maybe from dehydration. And so the decision is still to pursue the vaccination, the COVID vaccination in Norway. Uh, and that was the most recent statement from their, from their government because they realized that the benefit of vaccination, even in the frail older persons, still outweigh the harm. Remember that at the time, 23 deaths were um, 
uh, reported in, in COVID during the vaccination rollout, they had already been experiencing 400 deaths per week, 400 deaths per week in their nursing homes. So to them, although 23 was a, a, a worrisome number, to them it was still worth doing, doing uh, rolling out the vaccination for, for Norway. So what is my advice, having heard uh, what they had written about? My advice is uh, if you have a loved one in a nursing home who is very frail and has multiple medical problems and is in hospice care and nearing the end of their lives, you have to discuss with uh, nursing home authorities or whoever is running the nursing home on whether or not you want your loved one to receive that vaccine. But remember, nursing homes have to have a very strict um, infection control program at that time, at, especially at this time. They really want to keep COVID away from their nursing homes. We want our nursing homes to be uh, COVID free through strict isolation and even lockdown. We want our healthcare workers and staff in nursing homes to be fully vaccinated. And we also want our patients in nursing homes to be vaccinated. So take that into consideration. Kasi if one person was not vaccinated because of these issues of frailty, then you know, it may be more difficult to control that infection in that nursing home. Okay, and of course, if uh, you have a patient who is very frail or near end of life and did receive the vaccine, you really have to give them your most tender loving care and really monitor them. Subuan, kung nawawalan ng gana kumain. Uh, and of course, uh, you have to provide whatever nutrition they need so they don't get dehydrated, okay? So next slide. What about those with allergies? I, I think Dr. Nina Burba gave an extensive discussion on this using the PSAAI uh, statement uh, last month. Oh no, sorry, early this month, Feb 2021. So she talked about the reactogenic response. To us, that really means that you are now mounting an immune response, diba? Right? Uh, versus the allergic response. And the only current contraindication to the COVID-19 vaccine is allergy to a previous dose of COVID-19 vaccine and any of its components like PEG or polysorbate. And based on current data, the benefits of these vaccines to the general public far outweigh the potential risk of adverse reaction to COVID-19 vaccines, as well as to the risk of developing severe COVID-19 and death. So that is the statement from the PSAAI. Next slide. So finally, my recommendation is very simple. If you're a senior citizen, get vaccinated. Huh? COVID vaccines are generally safe and only the most effective vaccine brand for older people will be recommended for you. Okay, Older people are the best candidates for COVID vaccination, especially because many of you have chronic diseases that predispose you to complications and death. But it's also very good for you to also start a healthy lifestyle, by the way. Uh, make sure that your weight is managed, make sure that you quit smoking, that you take your maintenance medicines, and make sure that you show up to your uh, physician appointments. Para naman kilala naman kayo ng doktor ninyo, baka last year pa kayo naghuling nagpakita, di ba? So, the frailest and near the end of life may receive the vaccine, especially in nursing homes where strict infection control is necessary. But you really have to, you know, you have to have a heart to heart discussion with your with the physician of your loved one and with that nursing home director and close monitoring and tender loving care from families and caregivers need to be ensured for the frailest especially persons with dementia that's all thank you very much thank you very much that was uh, Shelly de la Vega director for the Institute of Aging oh the sorry so oh, si pala akong ano advertisement Oh, sige, go, on February, go, on February go. 13, oh. uh, at 9 a.m., we will have a webinar for free on supporting persons with dementia in the time of COVID. So we will talk about our COVID in dementia project, challenges of COVID among persons with dementia, support for persons with dementia in the community during COVID, hospitalized dementia patients with COVID, and nursing home care for patients with dementia and COVID. And I think and I hope Director Raymond will help us uh, have this uh, 
also uploaded or included in PDUT. That's all. Sorry, Susie. No, no. Thank you very much, uh, Shelly. I think, you know, we have a lot of social workers who are watching today. Ah, yes. So uh, we've got social workers who are watching who are uh, taking care of programs for our seniors. So we're, we'd like to really welcome all the social workers who are on the webinar today. And I was saying, just tell us what organization you're in, right? So we can just do a shout out later. But uh, thank you very much, Shelly. That was a very holistic view. You've even talked about dementia. And your message was very clear. We want our seniors to be vaccinated. Okay, yeah. we're going yeah. to have more discussion, Shell, uh, mm -hmm. after we have our two reactions. And it's my um, it's my privilege to, to introduce uh, a friend <laughs> and kasama sa maraming mga ano, maraming kwentuhan, a lot of discussions. Um, she's going to talk about children. Can you actually vaccinate young people? So my pleasure to introduce a professor of uh, pediatrics at the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital and clinical epidemiologist, Dr. Leonila or Indai Dance. Indai, welcome to the Hi. webinar. Good afternoon, everyone. Share your screen. Ko. Ano, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Wait. Teka. Parang hindi ako makashare. Teka. Wait a minute. Sige, while you're sharing it, I just wanted to say that one of the reasons why we're asking our uh, speakers to go to give a disclosure at the start of every presentation is because we've noticed that um, there there are uh, if if a doctor is working for a drug company that's not th that's okay but you just need to say so so that the audience knows that so uh, we've started this uh, disclosure. This, this process of disclosure when we started talking about vaccinations because we just need to know if uh, somebody is working for a pharmaceutical company. We're not saying it's bad or it's wrong, but you have to tell us so that we know uh, where you're coming from. So it's Maybe it's okay, but we need to know. Okay, go ahead, Indai. Yana, your slide's up. Okay, so wait. Yeah, so this is, these are my potential conflicts of interest. I'm a pediatrician. I'm also a pediatric rheumatologist. And so I do administer routine vaccines for kids. And I have administered vaccines for the immunocompromised as well, yung mga rheumatic patients ko. I'm also a clinical epidemiologist and researcher. And I, at present, I have two research projects on COVID-19 funded by the Department of Science and Technology. But I have no studies on vaccines. But I have previously uh, uh, expressed our opinion regarding evidence when we found something was uh, uh, amiss in some of our uh, uh, vaccine being used in the country. So the main question that was posed to me and, and to react to the two previous you know, excellent uh, speakers is who should not be vaccinated for COVID-19. Sabi ko nga, I just need one slide. So at this point, children, hindi pa sila kasali sa ating kailangang bakunahan. Because uh, when we do administer or read the evidence, we depend a lot on the clinical trials that was performed for the you know, drugs or the vaccines that are being uh, in question no? or being evaluated. And, and so far, only one vaccine, and this has been approved by the FDA na natin, has uh, included medyo ano pa nasa dulo pa, adole older adolescent, no? 16 years old and above, yung nandun sa clinical trial nila. So at this point, only this vaccine might be used in older children. Definitely for younger children, 16 and below, and especially for the other vaccines wherein they started at 18 years old for their clinical trials, hindi pa pwedeng gamitin. So not yet. So children, hindi pa kasali sa ating um, uh, vaccination uh, uh, schedule. Uh, but having said that, I think it's important for us to realize this is the figure from our DOH uh, COVID tracker. And you will note that um, yung cases of ating COVID in the Philippines is the general total uh, uh, pediatric population. 46,000 kids have had confirmed uh, COVID cases. And uh, around uh, that's around 8% of the total natin. No? We, we now have about... Uh, 
500,000 uh, cases in the Philippines. Sa deaths naman, uh, 206 children have died of COVID and that's around 2% of the total number of deaths that we have had because of this condition. So it's not because we don't want to include them, it's just that it's still being studied. At this point, there are a lot of bridging studies with regards use of the different vaccines in the younger age group. So they're looking into this and eventually, kaya sinabi ko to not yet, um, maybe the children will, might still be um, vaccinated with this new, with this new vaccine. Wait. Uh, but having uh, talked about the COVID vaccine, but I'd, I'd like people to realize that there are special considerations during routine immunizations because as pediatricians, we do give a lot of uh, vaccinations in kids. Uh, I think Nina and uh, Shelly has expressed their concerns about people having severe allergies. These are people with history of uh, history of anaphylaxis. No, So they have to be handled um, with special care, I would suggest maybe hospital setting when they get they can get the vaccine COVID vaccination as well. But for protein immunizations, these are some of our uh, considerations. Anyone with bleeding disorders, we also have to take uh, caution when administering uh, other immuni uh, immunizations. What about immunocompromised children or uh, kids on immunosuppressants like steroids? No, again. Uh, especially for live vaccines like MMR, we do give special uh, considerations. No, pag live kasi medyo we are very careful because it can actually create the illness, but in a milder form. But for immunocompromised, it could be a more severe uh, condition. But even even with immunocompromised children, like you know, I'm a rheumatologist, we do vaccinate also juvenile arthritis uh, patients. Uh, they've started to use even this live weakened of uh, 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 vaccines, uh, even for the immunocompromised. So yung first three points ko dito, bullet points, caution, that means you have to discuss this with your physician, whether the child can receive uh, even the routine immunizations, especially for the uh, COVID-19 vaccine. What about children who received immunoglobulins or certain blood products that can interfere with regards to efficacy of uh, you know, routine immunizations uh, and even severe illnesses, uh, we would suggest, you know, delaying it even, you know, a couple of weeks or even one month for patients who have received uh, these uh, uh, medications or treatment. Okay, so maybe the vaccines are not ready for kids, but we do have to ha continue doing minimum safety measures for children. And uh, I have enumerated a few things here so people will be uh, you know, reminded. No? Face masks. No? Our Philippine Pediatric Society with Philippine Infectious Disease Society of the Philippines, also with CDC and AAP, American Academy of Pediatrics, said that young masks can be used for children older than two years old because of danger of suffocation. So we have to be careful. No? The younger ones, in the Although they can be uh, infected as well, uh, we do uh, not recommend uh, using a face mask for this age group. Uh, WHO UNICEF would go for older children with the use of face mask. Six to 11 depends on the risk within the community. And for more than 12 years old, uh, same as adults na yan. Parang car seat ito. So soap, soap and water better than hand sanitizer. So preferably ha wash hands tayo. Uh, sabi nila ethyl alcohol is less toxic than the isopropyl alcohol. Also limit playtime with children from other households. So kung within the bubble ka lang, within the same household, they can play. But kung merong mga nangangapit bahay going to other household, you have to be careful and limit that uh, exposure for your children. Uh, and then there is a decrease in routine immunizations because of the COVID pandemic. So we have to remind mothers about uh, continuing routine immunizations because despite the pandemic. Last would be, there should be enhanced parent-child uh, relationship. Uh, we know everyone is quarantined. Uh, we're not letting our kids go out and it can lead to a lot of mental and physical issues. So there should be role modeling, involve children in family activities uh, and self-discipline, uh, self-sufficiency skills and uh, developmentally appropriate conversation. So be very careful because of the quarantine that can affect our uh, kids as well. 
Uh, so uh, I think, and then I, uh, who should not be vaccinated? I said children, not yet. And then, um, but I think two things na baka hindi masyadong na highlight dun sa two previous lectures. I think it's important to note that you cannot be vaccinated without your consent. So important that uh, yung nakita ko dun sa video in the first part of this uh, webinar was that, uh, you know, those mothers were very much uh, concerned about getting the right information. So I like that because you have to be aware what are the possible adverse events before you give your consent. So I think being informed is um, an important part in uh, vaccine acceptance. And I think one thing that I might want to remind people is that uh, who should not be vaccinated? If it's not your turn, you should not be vaccinated yet. Ang daming mga nagja-jump ng queue and I, the Department of Health together with the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group has already set the priorities on who should be vaccinated first. Remember, this is an emergency use authorization. It is being allowed to be vaccinated even though the studies to check the safety and efficacy is only for a short follow-up. Uh, it's for emergency use because of the number of infected individuals and people dying from the uh, COVID infection. So they have prioritized who should be protected first, simply the healthcare workers, and then yung na mentioned nga natin are the immunocompromised, the elderly, you know, the senior citizen. So if it's not your turn, please, you should not be vaccinated yet. So let the uh, proper sequence of people to be vaccinated uh, take part in the vaccination program. So hindi lang bagong uh, virus back variant, but also may bagong vaccines that are coming. So we should continue to do all these uh, safety measures. No? Yung uh, Health Pro Healthcare Professional Alliance Against COVID, HPAC, has um, repeatedly informed uh, our uh, 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 the other uh, the entire community about the importance of maintaining uh, air circulation, uh, physical distancing, use of face masks, and shorten the time interaction to further prevent, with or without the vaccine, the transmission of uh, COVID. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. That was Dr. Indai Dance, pediatrician, clinical epidemiologist. Indai, stay with us because we're still going to have a Discussion before we go to our next speaker, who Raymond will introduce. I just like to uh, respond to some of the some of the comments on the chat. So, uh, Shelly, they want to know details again of your workshop on dementia. Kindly post that there, and we will be having a special session with the allergologists because there was a question about how come we don't have allergologists on the panel. Well, yeah. we will have a special session with. PSAAI, so abangan nyo po yan. And then I just want to greet again our um, social workers, PUP Medical Services, Department of Social Welfare and Development, mga social worker natin, and also from the Philippine Red Cross. Okay, over to you, Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Susie, and thank you for that informative talk, uh, Dr. Inday. Maraming salamat po. Uh, and finally, we will have our final speaker for today, a reaction from none other than the Department of Social Welfare and Development's Assistant Secretary for Standards and Capacity Building, who is also the chairperson of the DSWD Technical Working Group on COVID-19 Vaccine Immunization Program, none other than Assistant Secretary Noel Makalalad. Asik Noel. Hello. Uh, allow me to express my gratitude to UP NTHC for inviting me here in this forum. Um, actually, I initially wanted to decline the invitation. Uh, however, I must admit that curiosity got the better of me, especially since I was uh, appointed to be the chairman for the DSWD vaccination program. And... <clears throat> um, I must admit that the, the reason why I, I accepted the invitation is because I wanted to learn more about the considerations uh, regarding this vaccination uh, program. And of course, uh, I do understand that these concerns are actually foremost in the minds of people, not only in the Philippines, but around the world. So <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, for me, the issue has been into what I call a slow boil since early last quarter of last year. What started out as an obvious mud scramble for the limited supply of vaccines slowly percolated to what should have been, uh, who, should have, who should have it first. Then uh, eventually it ballooned into various ethical considerations which ultimately centered into finding balance between vaccinating senior citizens against essential workers. So at the moment, this is, a, this is the dilemma that we are currently um, wrestling with. So in today's discussion, I was uh, pleasantly surprised that um, all the needed information uh, regarding these critical decision points was um, expertly tackled by the resource person. And as I was listening to the presentation, uh, this for me are very important as well as for those with no medical background. Uh, for me, the message is clear. We are here not because of the ethical considerations, but also for the decision, but also with the thought that our decision is also weighted uh, in view of the proportions of the huge logistical challenge that comes with the distribution of the vaccine. Uh, but mainly, uh, I think what I gathered from the presentations of the numerous uh, of the several uh, resource person is that it is it is very important that we should give this to the people. Uh, at the end of the day, it is very important that the people should be able to decide for themselves whether to get vaccinated or not. Uh, unfortunately, time is very short, and. At the moment, we were thinking, how do we get this information to the people in a form that is easily understandable? Because at the end of the day, uh, what we don't want to happen is that people become emotional and ask government, why are, why are we not prioritized with regards to the vaccines or the, the provisions of this vaccine? And what we've discussed this morning is clearly uh, very important with regards to the decision points. Not, but not, uh, not only by the individuals concerned, but also by governments such as us. So, ang alam ko lang, uh, sa ating mga Pinoy, madali tayong magparaya. Basta alam lang natin kung ano yung tamang dahilan kung bakit tayo nagbibigay ng ating uh, slots dito sa vaccine na ito. So, yun yung aking mga natutunan and I hope that um, I'll be able to get more of the Yung, yung mga sharings ng ating mga resource persons because these are very important uh, now that the DSWD is going into uh, information dissemination. Kasi ito yung gusto naming marating, may, uh, gusto naming makuha, may parating sa mga tao. Ano-ano yung mga importante uh, na dapat nilang pagtuunan ng pansin bago makarating sa desisyon kung sila ba ay magpapabakuna o hindi. So, lalo na ngayon, lalo na kanina, binabanggit yung mga considerations for the elderly. So, yung karamihan sa aming mga uh, elderly na nasa sa mga facilities ng DSWD, ito ay yung mga importanteng considerasyon para sa kanila. So, yun lang po. Uh, maraming salamat. Well, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Assistant Secretary Makalalad, for that reaction. Um, we're going to call everyone now into a panel discussion. So we'll have uh, everyone on the screen, Chancellor Manchit Padilla, uh, Nina, Dr. Nina Burba, Dr. Shelley De La Vega, um, Dr. Inday Dance, and uh, Assistant Secretary Makalalad. But before we uh, start the, the, uh, the open forum, um, we we want to give our panelists an idea of who's in the audience. So uh, let's flash the results of our opinion poll. It's on the screen now, Dr. Susie. Okay, uh, I can't see it, Raymond. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, so fifty-two percent of the of our respondents uh, indicated that they were from Metro Manila. Uh, and the next one will be from Luzon, obviously, and then besides Mindanao, we had 11 respondents say that they come from uh, a different part of Asia and also from Australia and the Pacific Rim. And a good number also uh, is viewing us from the United States and Canada from the North American continent. So maraming salamat po. Uh, what is your line of work? Uh, 31%. Actually, 32% po ang pinakamarami, which is from the nurses. So marami pong nurses. 
Yes. Ang nanonood po sa 10.31%, very, very close, uh, will be from the medical field. Others are from the pharmacy, midwifery, public health, education, policy, uh, legislation, and media. Meron po tayong kategorya na other. So that's something that we might need to break down for our next uh, poll for next week. And then... Okay, I think we lost we lost Raymond, um, and I can't see the poll, so we'll we'll pick up on that. Uh, we'll pick up on that a little a little later when we look at question number three of uh, what people thought about who should not be vaccinated. So we're going to start by asking the panel um, to ask a question to your colleagues. Um, I'm sure as as you were listening to the presentations. There may have been some questions in your mind. So anyone can uh, start with a question for everybody. Go ahead, please. Who wants to start? I can start. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. No, um, actually, you know, what is important now is, you know, we're well informed. And there's so many interviews in television and uh, people ask which one is correct. So my question to any of the panelists would be, can you give us, as well as the viewers, the uh, official portal, uh, official portal for information? Because I would like to believe that this, this one would be frequently updated for the benefit of the general public. I think Dr. Dance is started to write it out, but I think it's important for everybody to hear this information. Go ahead, Ndai. Yeah, so I, I think uh, maraming misinformation, maraming disinformation, and then there are a lot of opinions of uh, other experts and, you know, so people are getting confused. Uh, on top of that, marami pang mga uh, iba-ibang agenda. So uh, we, I, I think officially dapat yung sa Department of Health ang ating i-access. Meron sila special uh, uh, button doon just for COVID and there's also a uh, a section there for frequently asked questions. So I think uh, for the general uh, 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 community information, dapat dun natin kukunin. Um, marami ring fake news. So I think it's important na kung hindi naman kayo sure dun sa sinishare natin sa social media, uh, wag na lang natin ishare siguro kasi that actually propagates more uh, you know, uh, misinformation. The other thing is please check muna yung source no natin kasi you you will note naman actually i google mo lang yung source na yun makikita mo na na it becomes like a conspiracy theory or uh, uh, you know doubtful sources then uh, please refrain from uh, sharing or even reading further no uh, yun yun kaya less confusion thank you okay. thank you very much yeah anyone else has a question in within the panel Go ahead, Nina. Oh. Go, Nina. 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 Nasa PGH, pero actually baka hindi nga pa efficient, but we do come out with uh, uh, some infographics to keep people updated with accurate information. So we'll work it out na lang to disseminate that more broadly. And also the Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Disease also come out with, um, you know, there's, we have a website, we've been populating with uh, up-to-date information. So, I think, I think, I think, what, I think what, what we can do is put, uh, put all these links at the beginning of our webinars uh, on vaccines while people are waiting for the for the webinar to start because I think you're right, uh, Chancellor mentioned no, on there has to be a place where people can go because the information is changing really quickly and updated information is really the power of the healthcare workers. All of you who are watching us today, yun po yung ano no yun po yung inyong puwersa na meron kayong karagdagang kaalaman. Para pag may nagtanong po sa inyo, alam niyo po yung sagot. So we'll, we'll do our, uh, our share in um, disseminating these spots where you can get more information. Okay. Um, any other questions inside, uh, inside the group? What's to see? Baka alam ni Nina kasi. Um, 
parang ang dami na kasi nagtatanong, you know, uh, maraming nag-aas sa kanila magpapa-register ba? Are we being uh, we are being asked by our companies whether we should take the vaccines or not. So they're very unsure what to do with that. So anong anong advice ng uh, ng uh, if you're from, you're aware kung ano yung official uh, advice saan sila dapat magpa-register para hindi ma-duplicate Okay while Nina, while Nina is thinking about that I'll I'll give a reply because I got interviewed by uh, Quezon City yesterday and I saw their video and actually the local government at least in Quezon City I could see that they're quite prepared they've got the store warehouses storage, freezers, etc., and a registration system where you actually just send your selfie and you get registered to the no, no, to their main uh, to their main um, their main site. So I think the local governments are preparing, but they're not, I mean the public is not going to get the vaccine yet. Ang una talaga are the healthcare workers. So Nina, go ahead. What did you want to say? No, I was going to say that as far as we know, that uh, under the EUA, it's really just the government who can procure this. And if there, if eventually it will be trickled to the private sector, that might happen later on. Uh, pero ngayon, parang wala pang clear-cut um, pathway for that. But if our worry is whether magduplicate, uh, um, there are systems in place. So yon, yung duplication, parang hindi, it, the the current systems of uh, putting your name into the registration forms, parang they have a step kaya parang it takes a while for you to be fully registered. Kasi tinitignan nila whether you are in different uh, lists. No? So for example, you healthcare workers, for example, coming doctors, um, we could be working in various hospitals, but we should really just receive our vaccine from one hospital. So parang part yun nung kanilang screening process to make sure we are not in duplicate lists. So merong ganong ano, uh, there's a way that the issuing hospitals or through DOH is, uh, and through the LGUs is making that assurance. Kasi syempre sayang naman kung uh, double, double, double. Yeah, uh, Raymond got kicked out of the webinar but he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Raymond, you're sitting in some of these IATF meetings. Sige nga, what is the registration going to be like? And some of our uh, our participants are saying they have not received any information from the LGU. So go ahead, Raymond. How is the registration supposed to happen? So the registration starts with the COVID-19 electronic immunization registry. So the link to that is ceir.doh.gov.ph. So for healthcare workers, there is a letter of intent that will be submitted as part of that. For senior citizens who would have to be enrolled in the CEIR, that is being coordinated with the Office of Senior Citizen Affairs of the particular LGU. The goal is to have all the four priority groups, healthcare workers, seniors, indigents, and um, uniform personnel be to the immunization registry uh, uh, for the entire of NCR by by as soon as possible. Po. So that's something that we are looking at in terms of being able to uh, finish as soon as possible, maybe in the next uh, weeks. And then we have what we call the Philippine COVID-19 Vaccine Information List Management System, which is the one that integrates all of the different information systems that we will have to connect. I will type it in the chat box so that everyone can have a copy of the link. Okay, thank you very much. I think, okay, I think we can go back to the poll, although I can't see it somehow because there's there there we got your opinions. The basa audience natin tinano natin ano tingin niyo ba? Sino yon? Okay, nakita na. Let's go to question number three, and we're gonna ask our panel to um, respond to this quickly. Just a quick response. So that we can get uh, we can get the, the official answer to this, and it could be a yes with qualifications or a no with qualifications. That's all right, but just give us a quick response. All right. So senior citizens with illness, 
I think that's for Shelly. Yes. I thought I made it clear. That is the yeah. reason why you should be vaccinated because you have an illness. Okay. All the more reason. All the more reason for you to get vaccinated. Okay. Children below 16 years old in day. No, not yet. Not, so, I'm responsible. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> okay, adults with cancer, Nina. Uh, con um, dapat yes. Yeah. Pero consult with your physician to just make sure that because with cancer, you may be receiving other agents also. I think that's a very important message. Now, again, when I was uh, looking at the briefing on Quezon City, their video, before you're vaccinated, there's actually a doctor there who talks to you. So it's very important if you've got special conditions to talk to the doctor before you get your shot. Okay, adults with diabetes and hypertension, I think that's still you, Nina. Yes, yes. Kasi mga risk factors yan for severe okay. manifestation of COVID-19. So the vaccine is for you talaga. Okay, patients with chronic infection like tuberculosis, HIV, Nina. Uh -oh. So for HIV, chronic infection, uh, we, kasi immunocompromised state yon, but uh, many patients have already overcome that immunocompromised uh, stage and they're stable already. So in general, if your CD4 count is more than 200, then you're go okay to receive the vaccine. For other infections like TB, yes, you can have the... Uh, basta tapos ka na dun, ang message ay tapos ka na sa acute infection na hindi na ikaw, kung let's say you do get uh, an adverse reaction, hindi ka malilito whether is it because of my TB or is it because of the vaccine. So we'd like you to be over your acute infection. And if you're stable already like sa TB or finishing off your anti-TB meds, then yes. Go ahead and get your vaccine. Okay, pregnant women. <clears throat> so we discussed it kanina, in pregnant women, um, the recommendation, uh, there's no contraindication for pregnant women to receive the vaccine. But you have to really weigh the benefit versus the risk. Talk to your OB. In general, if you belong to one of the high-risk groups or you're a healthcare worker or you're in a situation na mataas ang uh, community transmission, for example. So the benefit of getting the vaccine outweighs the risks. So, yeah. So this is still a yes. And there are a lot of midwives who are watching, by the way. So, we'll see what the midwives are watching. Susie, can I add something? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yung sa pregnancy kasi, talagang depends on the, parang assess me risk, ano? So, it has been given to some pregnant women, especially dun sa active vaccination na countries na. Pero, there are ongoing studies on this, the same as in children. And, uh, Usually, in, in, they start that with the second trimester, second and the third trimester pa lang. So yung mga early studies na yon, at saka yung mga nabakunahan na because of the risk, uh, we're, we're collating all this, that information para mas stronger yung recommendations later on. Yes. Okay. Lactating mothers. Okay, there are a couple of questions in the chat box and in the Q&A. Oo, oh, oh, hindi nga ako makahabol sa pagsagot ng question. Amen, oh, amen. Dami tanong. Sige, lactating mothers. For breastfeeding, supposedly it does not cross the, it does not get into the breast milk. So, um, pwede. Pwede. Yes. Okay. Persons with allergies. Nina. At kung allergy... Kung basta ang absolute contraindication, kung sa first dose, kahit nagka-rush ka lang, don't proceed with the second dose. No? Uh, what about if you had allergies to other vaccines? Like maybe kanina may mga nagtanong tetanus vaccine or uh, influenza vaccine. Then consult your allergist first um, regarding that. Kung mga food, mga food, uh, food at saka oh. yung mga ganun, Kung hindi siya connected sa vaccine, then it's safe. Yeah, pwede. Oh, but but anyone with history of allergy, yung severe allergy or anaphylaxis, uh, talagang dapat yung setting uh, ready lang, just in case lang. And usually kung may allergy ka kahit na mild, usually longer yung observation period mo compared to the other vaccines. So they oh. have to be observed longer. So just in case they develop something. Okay, and and as I said, we were we are going to have a, a very specific session just on 
just with the allergologists and immunologists. No, but this basic information is, is very good for all of us. All right, immunocompromised patients using taking steroids. And then there was a question here about um, transplant, kidney transplant patients. Uh, Nina, go ahead. Ayun nga, discuss. Yung mga ganyang lahat ng mga scenarios na yan na uh, hindi rin natin alam kung anong status of health nyo uh, and whether the active agents that you are receiving like the steroids or other chemotherapeutic agents will affect your response to the vaccine. So for you, uh, it's good for you to actually consult also your doctor in addition to the doctor who will be evaluating you dun sa sa actual registration site. Yeah. Okay. Can, so, I, ano, can I also add, ano, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, yung mga vaccines that are now available, yung COVID vaccines, are are not live vaccines. Kasi yun yung medyo mas cautious, mas cautious tayo sa mga immunocompromised kung live vaccine yung uh, ibibigay natin like the MMR. So, yung what's available, yung mga mRNA, uh, I think dalawa pa lang naman yung na-approve sa atin, yung AstraZeneca. Uh, they're not really, uh, hindi pa tayo takot sa ganun. Hindi okay. siya live vaccine niya. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. People who have had COVID-19, uh, Nina mentioned this, but it's okay. Let's talk about it again because I think, you know, we have to repeat. No? I'm looking at the chat box. I'm looking at the question. So people still need to hear the answer again. Go ahead. Okay. So yung COVID-19, kasi tinanong rin ng isang participant, bakit ba hindi siya priority? Kasi... The assumption is if you had COVID-19 before, maybe you already have antibodies. Kaya sa prioritization list, medyo mas mababa ka na kasi baka you do have some antibodies. But we also know and are not sure whether these antibodies you have will be durable enough to last you for whenever, di ba? Ang current, uh, ang current data suggests baka 90 days to at most 6 months lang nagsistay yung natural immunity natin. So it needs to be boosted by a vaccine. So ang assumption, if you did get a COVID-19 infection before, siguro at risk ka and you can definitely have a reinfection. Okay. So the answer so, is yeah. yes. Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. All right. There's a question here and... Um, ayan, anti-allergy drugs in the hope that it will be prophylaxis to a future and allergic response. So no, no ang answer. No, I'll answer. Okay, Raymond, you got kicked yes. out. Now you're back in. Okay. Yes, <laughs> Doctor Cici. Questions. Okay, go. We, uh, I'm trying to select the ones that have not been answered. Po, no. Uh, the question po, and maybe uh, one of our research persons can reiterate. Po, um, how soon after you have had COVID nineteen can you be vaccinated? That's number one. And number two, just to reiterate, po, no. For those who have uh, parang post COVID nineteen infection, based on the data available, is there like a particular brand that they should be targeting in terms of? Ah, ito po ang pinaka effective kapag post COVID nineteen. Those those questions po keep cropping up. Maybe one of our resource persons can answer. Either Doctor Nina or Doctor Inday po. Ayan, kaya yan ni Nina. <laughs> Okay. I think she mentioned it in her talk. Yeah, so um, in general, you should wait for the period of time na tapos ka na sa isolation. Uh -oh, yan. So para naman hindi ka infectious din sa mga magbabakuna sa'yo, di ba? <laughs> so uh, kung mild to moderate, that's actually about 14 days. Kung you belong to the severe or critical, siguro hindi ka pa talaga makakalabas ng bahay mo to get vaccinated. But that's at least 21 days of isolation. Okay. If you did receive some other agents, like minsan we were given monoclonal antibodies or we were part of a trial, convalescent plasma, the recommendation is to wait for three months before you get your vaccines post the infection. Okay. Okay, another question here, Nina, can, for everybody, no? Um, can you get COVID even if you've been vaccinated and not know it because you're asymptomatic and actually spread COVID? Oh. To, to... 
Oo. So, yan nga yung medyo parang minsan mahirap i-explain kasi what the trials try the, what the trials show based on data is symptomatic so disease kasi ang measure nila yung pagtingnan mo lahat ng mga Pfizer trials and the other trials uh, after bakuna hindi naman nila tinignan or swinab tayo weekly di ba to know whether you did get an infection or not what they tried to do was to see kung magka symptoms ka ba ng mukhang covid and if you did tsaka nila sineswab to confirm whether you did get a uh, covid or hindi so Because of that, we don't know if there are asymptomatic infections that occurred along the way. So, yun yung sinasabi. Pwede, we didn't measure, the, the trials didn't measure that. So, we don't know. At the least, at the most pala, we know na the vaccines have been effective, efficacious in reducing significantly symptomatic COVID-19. Okay, so that, that's why we need to continue to wear the mask, wash our hands, keep physical distancing, even if you have been vaccinated. Isn't that correct? Correct. Yes. correct. So parang logically, siguro naman hindi na rin ako magkakaroon ng asymptomatic COVID-19. Pero categorically, we can't say that kasi the studies didn't really measure that. Yun. So we uh, need to so, continue doing the apat-dapat. Susi, okay. Susi, can, I, can I ano, stress lang that these vaccines yes. that have been approved, they're approved for emergency use. So that means uh, short pa lang yung ating follow-up and has, has been shown to be effective in actually two months, three months pa lang yung mga studies. Eh. Pero because of the, the, the urgency or the emergency state of the uh, health situation in the country, important na in approved in authorized na magamit so uh, we we still need to be very careful after the vaccination kasi some people have have this notion that uh, once vaccinated they can like lead the usual life pre covid hindi pa din we have to protect each other and then still wear yung mask yung apat dapat natin na sinasabi okay so karagdagan protection po yan sa atin lahat pero hindi po ibig sabihin na uh, Pariwara na tayo, no? We can't wear a mask anymore. We have to wear the mask, wash our hands, keep physical distancing. Um, Shelly, there's a question. Yes. Um, for those who are caregivers of um, older persons, and if an older person got vaccinated, sabi natin, antayin ng 30 minutes to an hour after, um, within the next 24, 48 hours, is there anything else na dapat bantayin ng mga nag-aalaga sa mga seniors natin na nagpabakuna? Well, any of the minor side effects can occur even after 24 hours. So watch out for fever, lack of appetite, or lethargy, and nausea, diarrhea. No, those are some of the milder side effects that we should watch out for for a period of days. Because, syempre, among older people, the reaction may be delayed. No? So, okay. yeah. So, parang may reaction tayo within 24, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, Nina, one of the things we mentioned is that uh, pain on the site of injection is a common, uh, common side effect. What do you recommend? For the pain on the injection site, ano ba dapat ginagawa dyan? So, pwedeng mag-paracetamol or non-steroidal agents or cold compress. Or compress. Cold compress. <laughs> okay, so lalagyan nyo ng, ng malamig. No? Yeah. So that, kasi we have a lot of nurses who are uh, are watching us, listening to us. So that's what you could that's what you could do. No? Paracetamol or cold compress. Raymond, what other questions do you have there? Actually, the question po is very, very recent and it ties to a recent Lancet article. Alam naman po natin, very controversial po yung China vaccines and Russian vaccines po, no? And the recent Lancet article mentioned that the Sputnik vaccine has a greater than 91% efficacy rate uh, with very few serious side effects to older populations. Um, Eddie, one care to comment about the findings that was shared with that, and is that something that uh, you would have like specific recommendations for, for in particular to the population groups? Maybe Doctor Indai. Uh, 
at this point inaaral na natin yan sa Health Technology Assessment Council no yung uh, I'm not part of HTAC but uh, I know that they're doing already the analysis and evaluation of those uh, studies uh, I think the study from the Russian group is uh, very similar yung results nila are very similar to that of the other studies as well and uh, ang, ang across the different studies kasi ang problema talaga not a problem but talagang short pa lang yung ano yung uh, follow up period nila i think they started i'm not sure kung july ba and then uh, the end period nila was november so masyadong maikli pa lang eh, but that's similar to the other pre, uh, other approved already na mga vaccines like Astra and the Pfizer, no. So, and the study was only done in Russia. So, and uh, less than sure one percent lang yung Asian. So, isa sa tiniting na natin when we appraise is the Asian population, no. Because we want to be sure na applicable yung data, not only in the group that the clinical trial where the clinical trial was done. So, mostly Russian. So, malaking percent are the white population. So, we, we need to look into that portion how effective the vaccine is no among uh, Asians so uh, inaaral pa parang ganun kakalabas two days ago lang yata lumabas <laughs> right okay so there are uh, there are some questions here about um, uh, testing so would you need to be tested before getting the vaccine that's a very interesting thought so the answer there, Susie, is no. <laughs> no. It's so oh, difficult to do, expensive. Oh, sobrang uh, gastos na yan, ha? Oh, so you don't have to be tested before getting the vaccine. And oh. actually, okay, so so then the second question to that, Nina, is, and Inday, is, if you have COVID and you don't know it, and you get the vaccine, is it Okay. So, so I'll answer. So yeah. clinical, so clinical trials, they have included, oh. they did not test, so they have included patients who've had COVID uh, infection. In mass vaccinations, kasi, it's very difficult to have that as a policy. So parang, you know, you're in, you're vaccinating millions of people and uh, would it be, it's not practical to do the test. And uh, that's why sa study nila, hindi din nila yung ginawa na itetest pa nila. And they found out naman na parang wala naman yata, walang main difference dun sa nagkaroon na. And, but they did a separate analysis for them. So... But then, uh, yeah, but then if, if uh, you know, let's say, let's just say, so this is not in the chat, this is just me at thinking thinking about the person who's, the people who are asking this question. What if, uh, you feel like you have a little bit of a fever and you're not sure if you have COVID. Should you get the shot or should you quarantine for 14 days? What is our advice on that? Anyway. Uh, I think there is a process uh, when you get to the vaccination site. They, they will monitor your, your if you have fever. They will monitor your temperature. So if you do have a fever, you might not get vaccinated when you get. And there. on that day. On, on that, that day. day. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that. In, I mean, mga practical. Yeah. Lang, mga practical. Uh -oh. Sige, go. Pero, in good question. That's a uh, in general, kasi sa sa well sa pedya, I'm a pediatrician. Yung bihira naman talaga yung may contraindication for uh, receiving the vaccine. Uh, but minsan kung may fever, kasi you cannot differentiate the side effect of the uh, the vaccine from that of kung meron siyang ongoing respiratory illness. No? So sometimes we, we would like to defer for a few days so as not to confuse the uh, reaction. And lalo na if this is a new vaccine, I, I would think they should have to be cautious sa mga nagfi-fever na and, ano, and sick. We don't know if they will turn out to be very severe illness. We don't know, especially if it's just an early part of the clinical course of the condition. Okay, there's an interesting question here. I think Nina got kicked out of the webinar. There's an interesting question here, but maybe Inday can answer this. Um, can you get two different brands of the vaccine? That's not recommended. That definitely not recommended because sabi ko kanina, di ba? We try to 
follow what happened in the clinical trial, the methodology of the clinical trial, because yung result nun was based on how they conducted the clinical trial. So if they gave it for children, uh, for adults lang, so we want itong result then for adults. So pwede natin ibigay sa adults kung gusto natin gamitin yung evidence na yun. So walang study pa na they have a term but inter something, you know, mixing of those vaccines. So wala pang study doon. So it's very, uh, it might be uh, dangerous to mix them. Lalo na if they're, uh, even if they're the same type of vaccine, it's not recommended to do that at this point of what status of the vaccine development. So maging faithful muna tayo, di ba? Huwag <laughs> yung paiba-iba. Uh, oh, and, then, and then we ha really have to be careful. Uh, like the, uh, the Sputnik, the Russian vaccine, are two different types for the first shot and the second shot. So ibang klaseng adenovirus yung ginamit nila for one. So hindi siya yung... Uh, of first shot ko to, hindi. Dapat kung first shot, ito yung binibigay nila. For second dose, there's a, a, a separate kind uh, for that same uh, brand. But I think Thank what's you, most Dr. important, Dr. Susie, I think yeah, what's more ahead. important is that if you get your first vaccine, you have to commit to the second. Please uh -huh. show up for the second kasi kawawa naman yung tao na hindi na bakunahan dahil ikaw yung nabakunahan tapos hindi ka naman pala kukumplet, hindi mo naman pala kukumpletuhin. You have okay. to be, you know, you have to commit to that second dose. Okay. Ayun. All right. Thank you po okay. for the equity question, Director Shelly. Actually, there's another question po here with regards to any comments po in terms of other countries uh, exploring na yung interval po between the first dose and the second dose, patagalin po muna para mas maraming makuha ng first dose. Uh, mabigyan ng parang uh, two doses sa yung mga tao with the normal interval. Any comments po? Yeah, there was a move, uh, especially in uh, European countries, uh, in, in London, I think, to delay the second dose so that more people can get the first dose because the effectivity of the vaccine on dose one is already 50%. And they are saying that's enough, you know, that 50% is enough to protect you. So why not? give the, the vaccine to more people by just giving the first dose to more rather than saving the second dose for those who had the first dose. So it, it was more of an equity issue. But here in the Philippines, I think the experts have decided let's stick to the correct process uh, as uh, stated in, in uh, well, HTAC, of course, will decide FDA, of course, and DOH will have the final say. But the decision really now for now is to you know, you really have to take the two doses. Yeah. Okay. I think we're approaching the top of the hour and we'd like to now run our um, evaluation. Uh, Raymond, you want to go do that? And then we're going to get our closing statements from, um, from our uh, panelists. Go ahead, Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Just, uh, just uh, a show of, uh, in terms of, an assessment of our panelists. I'll just read off the list with regards to the questions mentioned here. Number one, the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. Number two, the panelists were well prepared and organized. Number three, the panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Number four, the panelists used appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And number five, the panelists contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key COVID-19 health issues. So please feel free to key in your answers po as we get our final word from each of our resource persons. Okay, so I think Nina got booted out. We're going to start with Shelly De La Vega. Shell, what is your parting message okay. from Yes, senior citizens should get vaccinated because you are at risk. You are at the highest risk, especially if you have comorbid conditions. Do not be afraid. And trust uh, the DOH, the FDA, when they say this is the vaccine that we will roll out. And this, uh, this rollout will include senior citizens. Trust that the HTAC had done its work, that all the vaccine experts have done the work of looking at the efficacy and safety of that vaccine. So do get vaccinated. Thank you very much, Shelly. Inday. Okay. Uh, 
ako yung consent no number one, yung consent natin uh, is very important that's why hindi lang siya parang field trip na okay pwede kong pambakunahan no yung anak ko or something it has to be informed consent so alam niyo yung what is the expected uh, side effects number two, as Shelly said Uh, yung FDA and HTAC and all the government vaccine experts, government agencies have been working on this, hindi na nga natutulog eh, to determine what would be the best vaccine for our uh, country. You know? So uh, kung ano yung na-approve nila, yun sana yung ano, we are willing to accept that. And ang sabi nga nila, the best vaccine is what's in your arm. So parang kung ano yung umabot sa iyo, uh, yun ang the best kasi it can protect you especially if it's already FDA and HTAC approved. Uh, it, pag nabakunahan ka, it doesn't mean na protected ka na 100%. It's an add-on protection and therefore you still need to uh, protect ourselves yung apat dapat natin. And then last message ko sa children, not yet you cannot yet vaccinate children now we are waiting for more studies and more evidence to say it's safe and effective but um sana rin yung mga dose yung hindi pa turn nila wag muna silang magpa-vaccinate no yet so you will get your turn uh, we will have to do it one by one and sana in an organized uh, systematic uh, manner Ilang. thank you very much inday okay uh, let's have a sec uh, well makalalad Parting words po. Uh, yun ma'am, uh, nagpapasalamat po ka ag- ag- kami uli sa, sa forum na ito dahil ito po yung mandato ng aming departamento. Uh, ito po yung sinasabi ko kanina na people empowerment. This information that uh, was shared to us this, uh, this, this afternoon is very critical in assisting people to decide for themselves uh, what are the benefits of getting vaccinated or not. So... Ito po yung aming gagawin in the next coming days. Uh, i-roll out po namin itong mga informations na ito and hopefully makatulong para maging uh, maayos ang pagdesisyon ng bawat isa tungkol dito sa bakuna na ito. Okay. Uh, we're going to ask, okay, so Nina, Nina is back. Um, I'm going to ask Nina to be the last one. I'm going to ask uh, Chancellor to give her parting words. And then Nina, when you give your last uh, statement, There's a request for you to read through your last slide, so we're going to to flash that. So, uh, Chancellor Menchit Padilla, please, your last yeah, words. So- So, so this webinar is really for, for health workers primarily, although I know that we're getting a lot of the general public at the same time. So I think the lesson today, one thing we've learned today is that we, the health workers, must take on the responsibility of understanding COVID-19 and the COVID vaccine. And we must understand the merits so that we can explain to our patients, our families, and friends. And we also heard today that the official source of information is a Department of Health. Let's, um, let's avoid uh, looking at uh, fake news and passing on fake news. And to be responsible, we have to make sure that the information we pass is actually the real one. Back to you, Susie. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Manchit Padilla. Okay, our last uh, speaker is going to be Nina. Nina, are you there? I cannot see you, Atu. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait lang. Okay. Okay. So, Nina, um, your parting words, and then there's a request from the audience for you to walk through that very last slide, your summary, because that summarized the whole presentation. So maybe we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. Okay. So here's the. Can you hear me now? Parang okay, na, nawala. Yeah, nandiyan ka na. You just need to do a share screen. Yeah, okay. So this summarizes um, who Teka, should not definitely... Yeah, we don't see it yet, Nina. Sandali, ha? Uh, let's see. Are you oh. on share screen? I'm... Wait lang. Okay, Nina. Wait lang. I can I can see her doctors to see, but the, the slide, slide not the slide not yet. Oh, so. oh, I oh, need to slide. yeah, I need to get your to be co-host yata. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, yeah. So, Raymond, can I get the? Uh, yeah, they're working. I think uh, TVU. Yes, so. TVUP is assigning you, ma'am. Oh, uh, and for those of you who want to watch this again, um, you can watch it again on uh, on Facebook and on TVUP's uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Ayan, sige. So, there we go. Okay. Okay, so this summarizes. There are essentially siguro dalawang. Wala pa, wala pa. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, go, Nina. So, uh, you definitely should not get the COVID vaccine. So, parang we stressed yung second bullet pag bata uh, we should not give it yet there's no and en not enough data yet on that at saka yung nagkaroon ng allergic response to the first dose or any previous experience with any of the vaccine components ang important yung sinatawag na peg and polysorbate uh, chemicals and uh, if you have current covid infection then forego getting the vaccine first and let uh, allow yourself to recover from the acute infection. On the others, the many other questions we've had on other people with some comorbidities, then if you fall under the second and the third parts, no, yung pregnant women, breastfeeding women, people on anticoagulants or immune compromised states, then consult your doctor first. Uh, uh, talk to them about weighing, helping you weigh benefit versus risk. Yeah. In general, we're in a pandemic uh, situation. So the more of us who get the vaccine, the better. No? The first tranche will be the healthcare workers. For the healthcare workers who are here, most of us are healthy individuals. We hope to target talagang very high, more than 70%, if possible nga more than 80 to 90 percent para uh, we are a strong health force who will stay with the with the country and uh, be part of the servicing of our Filipino people through this pandemic. So yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so another very um, interesting webinar. We'd like to thank the audience. Thank like to thank all our panelists who uh, joined us today and prepared for the different presentations and um, next week we are going to talk about uh, next week we're going to talk about how are health workers going to get their vaccinations so very interesting we're going to have uh, PGH director Gapli Gaspi we're going to have the uh, medical director of um, Asian uh, Hospital Lito Aquin and we're going to have Christina Padulina who is from the municipality of Navotas, and we are going to talk about how you health workers are going to get your vaccine. So I'm signing off. Let's work together to stop COVID deaths, and we'll see you again next week. Raymond. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Thank TV. you to all of our resource persons and speakers. Oh, maraming salamat. Uh, for those who are still logged in, Please uh, continue on to answer our final poll question. Po. It's just the same question. Who should not be vaccinated for COVID-19? It's a multiple choice question. Po. Uh, we are seeing that more and more children below 16 years old dahil po sila ay narinig, nakinig pala kay Dr. Leonila Dance for that particular answer. So maraming salamat po. Magkita-kita po tayo ulit next week. Alam ko po, po Ang ating mga resource persons for next week po will have very, very interesting perspectives uh, with regards to the preparations, the simulation activities uh, being conducted right now as we try to prepare for the arrival of the first shipment of Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. So, dalawa lang po kasi yung may EUA ngayon, no? Pfizer at AstraZeneca. At nauna po yung Pfizer. Hopefully, we get that as soon as possible. Thank you so much to everyone. I'm signing off. I'm Dr. Raymond Sarmiento. Keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online. The enemy remains unseen. I'll keep your hand in mine. Let's say a prayer one more time. 
I know you long for home, but I am here, you're not alone. I'll stay with you until the coast is clear. The others pain before my fears, the others laugh before my tears, but right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask. Do I have strength to carry on? Oh God, how long will this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'm here to hold the line. I'll keep my head until my time. Just look into my eyes and say his name to realize. It's fine to be afraid. Just hold on to the word he gave. This time will come to pass Cause this salvation's made to last He'll carry you to see the break of day The others pain before my fears The others vows before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'm here to hold the line. I'll keep my head until my head dies. From my fears, the others lounge before my tears, but right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask, Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'll keep my word, you would is mine. The others pain before my fears, I'm pushing on despite the tears. Please take us through another day. Just hold my hand. And I will hold the line. I will hold